Hello and welcome. My name is Brandon Russell of Verve Biotech. Today we are going to be upgrading our Tidiastig Mirus enclosure. Tidiastig Mirus are a small to medium sized yellow scorpion from Brazil. Tidiastig Mirus are also communal and parthenogenic. Communal meaning they live together in small to large groups and parthenogenic meaning that this species once mature can have babies without mating. They're also a medically significant species. So starting off, we have our materials that we'll need today. I'm using a Sterilite 27 quart rubber main container, along with our substrate, sphagnum moss, and some cork bark. I've already started drilling some ventilation holes here, and I will finish drilling those. So I've elected to utilize ventilation holes along the top here, and they are about an inch apart and three high. Now you can measure them out if you'd like, um, but for this purpose, uh, I just kind of eyeballed it. Um, and then the other thing is you want to make sure that there'll be some plastic remaining in there. We'll clean that out uh, with a paper towel. There's no residual plastic. And I also kind of go along here to make sure that still feels smooth. There's no rough areas. Now it's very important that we select a drill bit size that is small. And it's also important that we have them up high and that when we set up the enclosure that there is no climbing surfaces that it can reach those small holes. So since this species is parthenogenic and communal, we keep them together from young to adults. And as the adults have the babies, uh, we want to make sure that these holes are small enough where the babies cannot escape and cannot get to. Um, so scorpions have very difficult timing climbing on very difficult time climbing on these smooth surfaces. Um, and then we also have a latching top um, for our enclosure. So next, once that is complete, we take our substrate. So the substrate is a mixture of peat moss, cocoa fiber, and a little bit of sphagnum moss in there, and then sometimes add a little bit of vermiculite as well. Um, so I've already moistened this substrate. It's important that the substrate stays moist, but it's not too wet. So an indication of it being too wet is if you can pick it up and you squeeze it and water dripping out of it. So you want it to clump, but not be able to squeeze water out of it. And that is the appropriate uh, moisture level for the substrate. So we'll go ahead and add some substrate in here. Um, I like to use for these larger enclosures, probably around two to three inches deep of substrate. And what that allows is just for that substrate to retain that moisture longer since Tidy Stimurus is a humidity dependent species. So we'll kind of mix this around. Add just a little bit more, we should be good. And then I'll just kind of pat it down. So once we have our substrate in there, Go ahead and add our sphagnum moss. Um, and so I tend, I've already pre-soaked um, this moss as well. Um, so make sure that again, just kind of squeeze any excess water out of there. So it's still moist, um, but nothing um, excess as far as moisture is concerned. Um, excess moisture can lead into a, a stuffy environment along with um, some mold. Um, and even this way, you may still get a little bit of mold developing. Uh, you'll just have to take to paper towels or something um, and some tools to clean that out um, if there is any mold. Some more moss in here. And again, the moss is kind of nice. It helps retain that moisture and then also provides little areas for some of the baby um, scorpions to crawl around in as well. And then we have some containers here full of um, cork bark. And so we'll kind of pick some appropriately sized pieces. I'll we'll probably just do a couple larger pieces and call it good. So 
So it's kind of like a little puzzle, try to fit that around. Um, and for our communal, the only thing we're looking for is just increased surface area. So this species is arboreal. They like to climb and hang out on the cork bark. Um, and so we're going to provide them with um, lots of surface area for them to live in, um, which will allow uh, a larger number of spe a larger number of these specimens in the um, container. Uh, in addition to some of these items, you can also add springtails and isopods. We'll probably add springtails later, um, as well as we use dwarf white isopods for most of our um, tropical or humidity dependent scorpions. So this is the basic setup. We have, again, our peat moss, sphagnum moss, coco fiber substrate that is moist, not wet, along with some sphagnum moss in here to help retain that moisture and for the babies kind of hide out in as well. Um, and then we have pieces of cork bark here, giving them lots of space and area um, to be able to hide and live. So once this is complete, um, we have our ventilation holes here as well. We'll go ahead and look to add our scorpion. So I add just a couple of containers that we put them in um, right now. Um, again, this is a medically significant species, so we wanna use caution. Never reach into a container um, with exposed skin or your hands or anything else. Um, even if you don't see the scorpions, again, these are a communal species, so they're gonna be all over this cork bark. Um, they also move very quickly. Um, so you always use appropriately, uh, appropriate tools. Uh, so I have a pair of uh, large hemostats here, as well as a pair of uh, forceps. And what we'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and place the container in our enclosure. This is going to ensure there is a barrier. So if I were to have the enclosure here, remove the top, right? There's a chance as we're transferring the material over to this enclosure that something might fall. Um, we don't want anything to escape. Um, and, and for one, um, possibly harm uh, the scorpion by any falls or anything like that. Uh, also too, uh, again, with this species, we don't want to um, have any escape. So I'll go ahead and remove the top of this have it in the enclosure and I'll use these forceps and basically we'll just slowly remove a few pieces of cork bark and place in here. Now what I'll also will do is just go ahead and add the contents some of the substrate in here just to make sure we get everybody. One more. Corner mat here. All right. uh, so I'll go ahead and take this out and put the lid back on. Um, and then we'll revisit this enclosure later um, to ensure that everybody, we have removed everyone. Another one here. Piece of cork bark here to remove. Again, we'll have some moss, and there's quite a few small ones in here. Just want to make sure we get everybody. So there's a mixture of adults and juveniles as well as a few babies. Um, so again, with all the room they have in this enclosure here, uh, they'll be able to uh, live in much larger numbers um, and also provide them um, with a very naturalistic environment, um, feeding time, what we do is we provide a mixed size of insects, whether it be crickets or um, maybe uh, a couple of different types of roach species. Uh, and we will dump in anything from a quarter inch in size all the way up to three quarters inch in size about once a week. Um, if we notice that if a female has a brood of babies on her back, um, then that will probably mean in that following week, 
that will have a much higher number of smaller babies to feed. So maybe add a little bit of extra of these smaller crickets as well. Um, but other than that, they will live uh, together. Um, and again, it's one of the most communal species of scorpions. Um, and as they continue to uh, reproduce, we'll have just lots and lots of baby scorpions. Uh, all sizes from babies, juveniles, sub-adults to adults in here. Thank you for watching.